I'm glad you gave me a chance. I always think it takes people with similar tastes to sustain a pleasant conversation. Nice to meet you. I'm Kaveh, an architect. If you have a project you'd like me to work on, then I'll need a detailed description of what you have in mind. The ability to appreciate beauty is an important virtue. It's good to get out and stretch your legs once in a while. People aren't made to stay cooped up inside all the time. My latest design's getting there, but there's still room for improvement. Hmm, better make my finishing touches before the deadline creeps up. Huh? When did it start to rain? Oh no, I forgot to bring an umbrella. Did you see that? That bolt of lightning was such an interesting shape. <laughs> it was like the wind's creeping in from the back of my shirt. And also the front. I get dizzy and sleepy when I'm under the sun for too long. It's a similar feeling to pulling an all-nighter on a work project. This isn't my first trek into the desert, but I can never get used to the heat. <sighs> Is there no shade anywhere? Did you sleep well? I hope you have a great day today, and that you don't run into someone who ruins your day first thing in the morning. This midday sun is fierce. I should go check on the building materials I left out to dry. There's supposed to be a great view of the stars tonight. Don't you think that's a good omen? Relax your mind and let go of all your troubles. Have a good night. It's fair to say I'm a pretty proud person when it comes to my area of expertise. Most scholars are when talking about their chosen fields. After all, we build our whole lives around it. I mean, if I ever stopped taking pride in my own work, then I would also forfeit the right to have any expectations of myself or anyone else. Aesthetic isn't the number one priority in my work, and nor should it be. Quality and safety are paramount. But I never neglect the artistic side either. That's what sets my work apart from others. You must have seen the Palace of Alcazarzare before. That's my magnum opus. I sacrificed so much for that. Everyone else thought I'd lost my mind. <laughs> well, if you're not me, and you don't share my trade, I wouldn't expect you to understand. Hmm. It'd be nice to meet someone who did understand, though. I've always thought that you can never truly know a person until you understand their deepest wishes. But once you start exploring hopes and dreams, whether they're your own or someone else's, it can be a dangerous journey. You might unlock something that can't be put away again. Not everyone can face the potential consequences of that. I almost don't want to say this out loud, but sometimes hopes and dreams bring suffering instead of happiness. Luckily, I don't mind my vision. People who know what drives them to create deserve our respect. Wouldn't you agree? The uninitiated often assume that the expertise of Kasharwar architects starts with clay and ends with lumber. It's such an ignorant perspective that it's not even worth arguing against. If all it took to build a house was to smoosh a few random materials together, there'd be no need for this discipline in the first place. As well as being one of the building blocks of human culture and civilization, architecture is also an art form. Art does not exist in a vacuum, so I've always been mindful of the experiential factor for the occupants, and the emotional character conveyed to those looking on from the outside. Oh, and I'm always looking for better ways to integrate artistic expression and practical functionality. Lesser Lord Kusanali is a wise and capable god. Not only is she extremely knowledgeable, she also possesses virtue far beyond mortal comprehension. I have only the utmost respect for her tolerance of others, especially in a nation of learning like Sumeru. That takes great equanimity. Sometimes, though, I do stop to wonder. Surely even the gods must have their struggles, too. Oftentimes, confusion is the beginning of wisdom. In which case, how can we ever achieve true happiness? I guarantee you'll never meet anyone else who's as infuriating as him! And for the record, yes, I would say that to his face. Sure, he's smart, and sure, geniuses often come with a bad temper. But that's only half the story with him. He knows perfectly well how to appear friendly and likable to others, he just doesn't want to. If he ever gives you the impression that he doesn't really have a temper, or that he's rigidly logical like a machine, then you just don't know him well enough yet. He definitely has a personality, it's just... Too big a personality. Most people wouldn't get it. Alhaitham helped me out a fair amount recently. 
If we were still as close as we were during our student days, then I'd be thanking him every chance I got. Now, though, I can't seem to get a word of appreciation out of my mouth. Even if I could, I wouldn't want to give him the satisfaction. <sighs> I guess you could say our relationship is something of a mixed bag these days. Honestly, with everything that's happened, it almost feels like the universe has been playing pranks on us. It's hard to make sense of it all. Too much to process for one lifetime. I will say that it's not every day that you get to know someone like him. I just wish he could rein in some of the worst excesses of his personality. <sighs> okay, yeah, that's never gonna happen. Ah, Tainari. He's one of the nicest guys you could know. If you've met him, you'll know what I mean. He's kind, and he has enormous expertise in his field, but he never brags about it in front of other people. And he seems to genuinely care about his work. Back when I was building the Palace of Alcazarzare, I asked him for some tips on how to pick out the right ornamental plants. After he wrote back to me, he also helped me out with some other issues, too. Oh, and I almost forgot. He was the one who first introduced me to Sino. Dory is the owner of the Palace of Alcazarzare. Uh, excuse me? Mine? Oh, no, don't be ridiculous. I know full well that it doesn't belong to me. I know, I know, but... Oh, please, let's not go there. Dory is a shrewd one. She knows how to coerce others into doing things for her. I, uh, <clears throat> for <clears throat> various reasons, I now owe her a large sum of money. It all got quite complicated in the end, but... Uh, anyway, I wish she'd show me a little mercy and stop making my life a misery for the sake of Mora. I swear, she doesn't seem like a bad person at heart, so... I just don't understand. How did she turn out like this? Sino can come across as cold and ruthless, but he's actually a very big-hearted guy. I still remember how shocked I was when Tainari said he was going to introduce me to his best friend, and then a couple of seconds later, an incredibly intimidating Matra comes walking through the door. I honestly never expected to meet a Matra who's so comfortable hanging out with scholars. Gotta say, though, I can't stand his sense of humor. It really makes my skin crawl. If he ever invites you to a meal at Tainari's place, make sure someone's bringing beer, because no one should have to endure Sino's humor while sober. I've met Kale quite a few times now. As Tainari's student and assistant, she follows him everywhere. With her diligence and patience, she's much more responsible than most other kids her age. But, um, I can also tell that she's got a lot going on inside. Nilu's talent as a dancer is indisputable. Zubair Theater really lucked out when they recruited her. I've heard that she has a great personality, too. She always smiles and says encouraging things to her audience when she's performing. <sighs> Once I can find some time, I'll have to catch one of her shows. Madame Farouzan doesn't mince her words, so I can understand why some students at the Academia are afraid of her. She doesn't have any bad intentions, though. All she wants is to devote herself completely to the research that interests her. Some people say that all her Avatat scholars are hard to get along with, and, uh, <laughs> I'll let you be the judge of that. I assume she's already asked you to be her student? She sure is a little intense when she's doing the hard sell, huh? But she can walk the walk, too. She really does know her stuff. You heard that I've earned myself a little fame in Sumeru? <laughs> Don't believe everything you hear. They're exaggerating, trust me. It's easy enough to make a name for yourself in Sumeru if you stick around here long enough. Honestly, I think managing to keep a low profile would be more of an achievement. I hope you didn't hear about me because of my bankruptcy scandal, though. Hmm. If you're actually willing to hear me out, I could tell you about some of my more redeeming qualities. <laughs> you're not thinking about enrolling in the academia, are you? Well, if you do sign up, from a pragmatic standpoint, I'd have to advise you to steer well clear of design. Don't get me wrong, it's a fascinating subject to study, but the work is... brutal. I spent some time working under one of my seniors after I first graduated, and they worked me to the bone every day. I was constantly being ordered around like a pack animal. I really don't know how I survived for as long as I did. While everyone's aesthetic preferences differ to a point, beauty is, on the whole, a pretty concrete concept. I do think it's possible to establish some basic objective aesthetic standards. It's possible to improve your aesthetic appreciation, too, although it takes a lot of time to get the experience. If you ever need any advice on that front, by the way, 
you're always welcome to come to me. Some people think I like to stir up trouble, but they don't know what they're talking about. Anyone trying to make any sort of progress in life is inevitably going to come into conflict with other people from time to time. You can't just ignore the situation because you don't want to deal with it. I like to have a drink or two when I've got the time. It's a good way to de-stress. Hmm? Oh, yeah, I mean, mostly just to pass the time. <laughs> uh, um, what's that look for? <sighs> all right, all right, I admit it. Maybe I do drown my sorrows a little more often than I was letting on. It all gets a bit too much sometimes, what with the unfinished projects, obstacles that I can't overcome, misunderstandings with other people. Uh, don't you struggle with those kinds of things as well? Music, architecture, sculpting, painting, all are worth taking the time to appreciate properly. I wouldn't say I'm an expert in all of them, but as long as I stay interested, maybe I can master them all one day. I mean, look, I already know how to play an instrument. My troubles? <sighs> hmm. The most obvious one would be my financial situation. It's not that I can't make more, it's just I can't seem to hold on to it. So many things in life require money, and if you're not careful, it just disappears. Uh, don't worry about me, though. I'm a lot better than I used to be. I'll be more careful to live within my means in the future. My favorites are alcohol, warm soup, and anything with cream or cheese in it. Oh, and I'll never say no to fresh fruit. I can't deal with anything that's too hot or spicy. If I have to eat them, I leave them to cool first, so I at least don't burn my tongue. This is marvelous! Can you teach me how to make it? I bet this would go great with a glass of wine. Uh-huh. Uh, um, it's, um, uh. Is it your birthday today? Well, congratulations. Birthdays are important days, and it's also one of those days in the year that gets you thinking about your family. However you spend today, I hope it makes you happy. This'll do nicely. Thank you. Hmm. Got any more where that came from? My horizons have been broadened. <sighs> I hope I can hold on to this feeling. The more power I wield, the more things I can accomplish. Even if achieving my goals comes at a cost, and even if all my hopes and dreams are built on pain and suffering, I don't want to turn back now. Scanning! Come at me! Sight clear! Watch and learn! Breaking new ground! Feast your eyes! A new discovery. What a lucky find. Bet that's made your day. This is incredible. No, extraordinary. <clears throat> How annoying. That was your last chance. Ugh. Shoo. Leave this to me. Get behind me. So many things I never accomplished. Ugh. Why? Don't <clears throat> crush my dreams. Ugh. Hey, cut it out. Ugh. I've been through worse. Need a hand? I'll take care of this. Is that the client? Wait. Oh, it's you. Just put down that worthless book and tell me what happened in the academia. It doesn't matter. It's probably just another thing that you used your authority to get your hands on anyway. Just put it aside. Listen, I came back today only to hear that the sages have disappeared. Would I be here asking you if I knew? You're the scribe, not me. So just tell me what you know already. Huh? Hmm. Why do I feel like you don't really mean it? Maybe it's because you've never said anything good about me before. Oh, you... See? This is why I hate discussing anything with you. Your ridiculous and arrogant attitude always gets in the way. Ha! Huh. What was your first clue? Are you threatening me? Stooping to a new low, I see. Ugh. And don't change the subject. You, a sage? <laughs> what a joke. The academia might as well just close tomorrow. Don't get me started. I get angry just thinking about it. Like I need to tell you. Keep your nose out of my business. I was in the desert for a large project, but considering Haravatat's utter ignorance of architectural and aesthetic matters, you probably wouldn't understand. Oh, which is truly unfortunate. I can only pity the man who doesn't understand the first thing about beauty and romance. Unlike a true... Uh, hold on, uh, wait a second. What do you mean by when Sumeru needed me most? Ha! And you think I'd believe that? 
Huh? What nonsense are you talking about? You know what? I'll ask around. I'm sure someone knows what's going on here. You're dead if I find out you're lying to me. Ah, you're back. Quick, come help me see if this painting's all straightened. Uh, and... Huh? Who are they? You're not from the academia, are you? Wait, what? How do you know me? Oh no, oh no, do people know that I live here? Yes, yes we are, but keep that to yourselves. Please, don't tell anyone else. Hey, you're leaving just like that? What's the deal, I'll hate them? Uh, sorry, I know we've only just met, but I have to ask. Are you, um... You wouldn't happen to be actors that I'll hate them hire to pretend to be his friends, would you? Guess not. I've never seen him invite friends home before, so please excuse my surprise. You guys get it, right? You know, with his temperament and stuff. Uh, I wouldn't say friends, exactly. Okay, well, we used to be. But we're not anymore. Don't worry about it. My name is Kave. I'm sorry to have met you under these circumstances. Anyway, please don't say anything about me living here. Are you serious? How could you... Oh, of course. You're all Hatham's friends. Still, why do you have to treat me like he does? Hmm. Entertain your own friends, why don't you? Ha! That's rich coming from you. If humans aren't humans without their humanity, then you'll probably evolve into some other species in another decade, I wager. At least I'd be a fungus with empathy. Sorry for eavesdropping, but what happened to you guys? Are you in trouble? Are you all okay? Huh, so that's how things went. Ah, <sighs> such is life. If only he'd known, Alhatham could have stayed indoors today, and the whole thing could have been avoided, right? Plus, he could have helped me with the housework for once. See those books? They've been sitting there waiting for someone to sort through them for an age. If you're not gonna read them, tidy them away! They don't belong there! Oh, so the pot's calling the kettle black, is he? Hm. Well, having said all that, are you okay? You... <clears throat> you don't understand anything. Stop criticizing my taste in decoration. Hello. <sighs> this place sure is interesting. I'm still getting used to it all. Never have I seen a place where you can decorate to your heart's whimsy. You don't understand what this means to an architect like me. It blows my mind. So much free space for building and designing. It's like a sketchbook that'll never run out of pages. I guess what I really want to say is, I'm so grateful that you invited me here as your guest. Uh, that might not be the best idea. To be perfectly honest with you, my blood has been boiling with excitement ever since I first stepped foot in this realm. Guess it's a designer's instinct. I mean, if you ask me, I think all artistic folks are kind of like this. Looking at your realm, all I can think about are things like architectural composition and facade designs. Speaking of which, can I see your gardens and ponds? Or how about your water fountains? If you don't mind, tell me what you had in mind when decorating your realm. I want to know the reasoning behind why you arranged the roads and buildings like this. Uh, whim? Wait, why would you just put things together on a whim? None of this was planned? When it comes to design, placement shouldn't be arbitrary. Oh, don't tell me. The boundless potential of this place has robbed you of your principles and pride as a creator? I see now. These weirdly spaced furnishings, and all the things that seemingly serve no purpose. Hmm. Ugh, it's okay. I'll chalk it up to you having a unique sense of style. Ah, I see taking what you've learned from your travels and applying them to your principles of design. Oh, excellent. You have the eye for this kind of work. If the life of an architect wasn't so difficult, I'd recommend that you enroll in formal study. What did you say? I... Ahem. It's fine. It's fine. People have different tastes. I can't force you to like my style. Besides, some aspects of it are difficult to appreciate unless you have a certain level of understanding about aesthetics. Hmm. I'm not so easily offended. Pfft. Um, uh, mm, uh, uh, uh. Look, I've been pretending that you know something about decorating, so can't you play along too? 
I'm an architect. I build and design things. Seeing your home devoid of anything makes me feel really... really sad. Can't you try, just a little? Don't let such a wondrous space go to waste. Sure. Anything you want to talk about. It's probably best if I don't pick the topic of conversation. I've had people tell me that I just end up rambling on endlessly about my profession. My life? Hmm. There's a lot I could talk about, but I don't know where to start. I guess I'll share this. There was once a time in my life when I lived in abject poverty. Bankruptcy led to many a misfortune. In this world, if you don't have money, you essentially have no dignity. I hated living like that, but I also had no quick way out of that situation. Every day was a struggle between my ego and my reality. I had a lot of pride about being a master architect, so I detested the idea of doing anything else for a living. Only later did I learn about the more difficult aspects of life. I was far more idealistic during my years as a student. I hate to admit it, but an overly naive person cannot survive in this world. Ah, oh, sorry. I didn't mean to take the conversation to such a heavy place. Please, pretend I didn't say anything. Hmm, things I like. I recently bought a new coffee grinder. It's been great. It's so elaborately made, and most importantly, each component is perfectly in its place. It doesn't have any extra screws or parts, and it grinds beans quickly and silently. It was a great purchase. Ah, I left the house in a hurry today, so I didn't bring anything with me. I'll bring you some finely ground coffee next time. I want to go to the most distant point from here. With such a fantastical realm, I want to know where its boundaries roughly lie. It's not every day you come across technology like this. If it could be replicated one day for architectural projects... Oh, Sumeru's buildings can be divided into several primary categories. Buildings in the rainforest are mostly wooden, while those in Sumeru City and Port Ormos are generally made of stone. You've been to Port Ormos, right? Its lighthouse is a paradigm of Sumeru's architecture. I was responsible for its last round of renovations. Although we managed to renovate the building's weathered exterior, restoring the lighthouse's heavily eroded foundation was a massive struggle. There was only so much we could do. If only we had a place with a stable foundation and an unobstructed view. We could then experiment with builds to improve the lighthouse's structure. In some ways, yes. But I'd never try to buy this place from you, even if I had the mora to do so. This little magical teapot must have a special place in your heart. Home, huh? I've designed many houses for others, but a house isn't really the same thing as a home. A house can simply be a pile of wood on a plot of land, but a home cannot exist without inhabitants. The presence of people is what turns a house into a home. I heard that you embarked on your journey to reunite with your sibling. While I cannot completely relate to your situation, the yearning for loved ones is a universal feeling. I pray that your dream soon comes true, that you find your sister and have her in your life again. <laughs> of course! When that day does come... I won't charge you any commission fees. I'm sure your happiness alone will be more than enough for me. Good morning. A new day brings new tasks and responsibilities. A little tip, take your time. Everything will get done. Oh, I just love theaters. They take you away from your troubles, and you just feel so free. I quite like this fountain. It's on the smaller side, but it serves its purpose well. The decorations on the side are quite lovely, too. This style is one of the most widely used in Sumeru. You can see its influence on many of the academia's buildings. If I could recommend only one of Sumeru's architecture styles, this one would be it. The central white section really brings the whole composition together. As for any shortcomings, I suppose the sections extending from the floral vault are prone to collecting dust. It must be a pain to clean them. Oh, come on, not again! Isn't this the sixth proposal I've shown you? What's your issue this time? I have to say, that's a terribly vague and unconvincing explanation. Please enlighten me. What would feel more right to you? I... <sighs> the roof and the door are the most fundamental parts of a building. If we were to change them, then what would be left of the design? Even if the soul of the building won't be lost, all traces of architectural style would be gone. Anyone with the slightest inkling of architectural knowledge would know to leave them alone. What? I... 
I really don't know how you managed to come up with such a ridiculous idea. Wait, don't tell me. Someone hired you specifically to commission me and put me through the ringer? Come to think of it, though, I really don't think I've gotten on anyone's bad side recently. Anyway, that's it. I will not be working on this commission anymore. Goodbye. Maybe you can find yourself some other genius who'll be able to satisfy your demands. Taking this commission was truly the worst decision ever. Hmm? Oh, hey, I wasn't expecting to run into you here. Actually, while we're on that, what are you doing here at the tavern? Don't listen to anyone who says that drinking is an elegant pastime. It's no good for your health. Ah, uh, so you saw all that, did you? Ugh, I thought I was in the clear. I made sure to double-check that nobody I knew was around. Uh, anyway, thanks for looking out for me. Honestly, it wasn't that big of a deal. I'm used to it by now. Stress is just an inescapable part of being a working adult. Boss, I'll have a glass of wine. Same as last time. Do you want something too? I'll put it on my tab. I know you're already keeping a secret for me, but if you could add this one to the list as well, I'd really appreciate it. Arguing with a client is not a good look for me. If word gets out, other potential clients might be afraid to work with me. That guy, though... What was he even going on about? All those ridiculous demands of his? He's just a blabbering fool trying to act like a know-it-all. Another glass, please, boss. I'm not leaving today till someone has to carry me out. It really is every other day that you'd run into a client who knows nothing about construction requirements or architectural style. If this was in the past, I'd never have gone through six whole drafts trying to accommodate the client's preferences. But perhaps getting used to this just means that I've grown numb to it. I've worked on so many projects since graduation, and none of them have been approved at the first pass. I would spend a lot of time altering my designs, and by the time the clients were finally satisfied, all my passion and enthusiasm would be gone. It feels like I'm straying further and further from my artistic vision with every change I have to make. I suppose, though, that just sticking to your guns and completely disregarding other people's feedback would also not be a good thing. All of this makes for a real paradox, one that particularly crops up in my work, too. In the end, what is the true meaning of art? Should I see it as a divine gift of inspiration from the gods, or an expression of the light of my own wisdom? Boss... What do you think is the meaning of art? What do you think, Traveler? Yes, art shouldn't be self-indulgent entertainment saved for the elite. Let's say that I built a house for someone. If they don't like how it looks, then no matter how brilliant it may appear to me, they won't be happy with it. The problem is that it can be very difficult to get validated by others. I could compromise my personal standards to accommodate my clients, but often that just mean creating a final product that I would struggle to look at. Hmm? Ah, thanks for offering, but you've seen how he is. He's not going to listen to anything I say. He understands nothing about my design, and all the suggestions he made were as if he just wanted to mock me. Okay, it is possible that I was just jaded by my frustration. Well... Given I'm already on my sixth draft, I can probably push myself to make a seventh. Let's go have another talk with him. I know where we'd be able to find the guy. There's no time to waste. The wine can wait until another time. I'll go take care of the bill. I... I've changed my mind. Uh, I was overreacting earlier. Can we try discussing the project some more? Ah, uh, thank you for understanding. Mutual trust is the basis for good communication. Now that we've got that out of the way, I think we can have a more productive conversation. To be perfectly honest, your commission request has been the most peculiar one I've ever received. Even now, I still know nothing about the building's intended purpose. All I know is that you want to build something in the desert for public use. I am aware that overly specific requests will restrain the architect's artistic freedom, However, knowing nothing about the intended purpose of the building also means I have no idea if I'm on the right track. I've produced several draft proposals for you to choose from, and you've rejected every single one. If we don't get on the same page, it could be a decade before we can finally break ground on this project. Hmm? 
Just what? Ah, uh, please give me a moment. My head's starting to hurt again. Just please hold on for a second. <clears throat> so, let me get this straight. You want to reduce the cost of the project, right? But if we implement your suggestions, then I'm afraid we have to scrap the entire design. Architectural design cannot be neatly split into discrete parts. Any change to one part of the design will affect the quality of the whole thing. I decided to utilize high-end timber for this section because the weight-bearing structure requires the supporting materials to be durable and strong. Same with the tiles. Switch them out and the entire mural will have to be redesigned. More importantly, if we make such a change, both its practical functionality and aesthetic value will take a great hit. If all you need is a building with a roof that can keep people dry in the rain, you shouldn't have commissioned me. Many architects would be able to build you one of those while charging far less in commission fees. I think the most important thing for me is to understand what you would actually like to get. If you could tell me more about your vision, I might be able to work with the design some more. You are the client, after all. You should have the final say on how the project turns out. Hmm... That's a bit more information than last time, but it's still extremely vague. To put it another way, every rich person who wants to build a mansion for themselves would request something like this. We've gone through many proposals, and this draft is already the cheapest one. Cutting costs by substituting building materials will not only detract from the overall effect of the building, it also won't save you much more in the grand scheme of things. Hmm. I also have a similar feeling... Uh, is that really okay? I mean, what he does now is none of our business. He does seem really suspicious, though. He dresses like a rich person, but when you talk to him, he hardly sounds the part. That's actually pretty common. Not all rich people are spendthrifts. Many are just, as if not more, stingy than him. The more mora some people have, the more they love interfering with people's lives like constantly reminding you to pay back your debts or hinting every other day that it's time for you to pay rent. Actually, now that I think about it, I'm not even sure this person really wants to work on this project with me. Putting his vague requests aside, he's still finding excuses to procrastinate even when we've decided on a plan. Who knows how long construction will take if he keeps delaying things like this. We should find him again and get some clearer answers. The sooner we can break ground on this, the better. Huh? Where did he go? I could have sworn he went this way. Let's keep looking. Oh, hey, look! Isn't that Badawi? It sure looks like him, but he's dressed completely different now. What is he up to? He used to be a member of the Aramites? Huh. From the way he was dressed, I would have thought he was a merchant from the rainforest. Let's ask him about it. We meet again. That's what we wanted to ask you. Who are you? Why did you dress up like a merchant to talk to me about our project? There's no need for us to continue this project if you still want to keep hiding things from us. I don't work with individuals I can't trust. A library? Funded entirely by yourself. Shouldn't this be the responsibility of the academia? I've heard that the academia will be looking to prioritize the desert with the allocation of educational resources and materials. It sent over a large shipment of regular goods just last month. To the point that you even disguised your identity? That's certainly taking playing it safe to the next level. Hold on. Don't tell me you've also been scammed before. Just a hunch. A while ago, I accepted an offer to work on a project in the desert and was also scammed out of a large sum of mora. I ran into someone who was living in a pretty run-down house. I noticed a load-bearing wall on the verge of collapse, and suggested that I build a new house for him. He said that he had no way to pay for it, so I loaned him some of my own mora, and told him to get some stone and timber from the local vendors. Soon after that, I found out that he had gone gambling with all the money, and lost everything, down to the last coin. And after that, he even borrowed Mora from me twice more, using a different excuse each time. I didn't even suspect him of any wrongdoing until he hired a group of mercenaries and tried to ambush me in his own house. According to him, I looked like an easy target because I was an academia scholar who didn't have any family or friends in the desert. 
What kind of person would just look at someone else and think, this guy looks like an easy target? <sighs> it's all right. You were also scammed by someone from Kasharwar, after all. I should apologize to you on their behalf. Ultimately, neither of our experiences had anything to do with the desert or the rainforest. People who are new to an area are always easy targets for criminals. Yeah, you'll find both good and bad people everywhere. I can't understand the logic of those who like to take advantage of others, but I have to accept their existence as a fact of life. Anyway, I digress. Let's return to the topic at hand. Did you keep rejecting my designs because you thought I was deliberately using expensive materials to take a cut as a middleman? By cobble together, you mean you're going to spend your entire life savings on this project? But then, what will you do if something unexpected comes up, and you find yourself stuck with no emergency fund? <sighs> yes, I can imagine that. My father passed away at an early age. Even though I had a good number of friends during my years at the academia, for some time I still sensed many critical looks in my direction. I'm sure a child coming all the way from the desert will have an even harder time. But let's bring this back to the building itself. I think you said that you want this building to be quiet and warm, with its doors serving as a solid barrier to block out the sound and fury outside, and allow one to focus on the book in their hands. Building it according to the current plan will be quite costly. Even if I don't charge you any commission fees, I don't think we'd be able to keep it under your budget. Hmm. Any ideas on what we can do? A slightly different style. Hmm. Give me a minute. Most architects would probably prioritize cutting costs and removing extra features in this situation. Indeed, converting the building into a simple bungalow would solve most of our problems. However, I do not think this would be the best solution. While it's true that the aesthetic value of a building is often viewed as an afterthought, neglecting it has some long-term negative consequences. It is especially undesirable in this situation, as the library will serve a high number of children, many of whom would have never been exposed to structures that may be considered elegant or beautiful. To completely give up on the more aesthetic design would mean stripping the children of an opportunity to appreciate the beauty of architecture. I share Badawi's sentiments in wanting to preserve a more complex design. However, if we can reduce the ornate aspects of the design while maintaining its fundamental elegance, which is to say we won't touch the arches and stone pillars but make changes elsewhere, hmm, this is definitely a first. To make up for the loss of regular details, we would need to put a lot of extra effort into the layout, lines, and color. It just increases the difficulty of the design. <laughs> you should feel lucky that out of all the architects in the city, you chose to approach me. Most of the others would have given up on this project by now. As for inspiration, I think I might have something in mind, but I'd need to visit the site to make sure. Where do you want this place to be built? Tell me the exact location. Okay, then we can pay a visit to Aru Village. Let me think. You said you used to be an Eremite mercenary, right? In that case, you could help us clear out some monsters that are blocking the way to Aru Village. We want to keep the roads clear, and reduce the loss of materials during transport to a minimum. If everything goes well, that'll help us save some Mora. What are you waiting for, then? Let's pack up and get ready to go. Most materials going from Caravan Rebat to Aru Village would pass through here. There are a lot of monsters out here today. If you find it hard to keep up, just let us know. Is there someone you know who can help to look after you? <laughs> I think it's really admirable of him to spend his whole life's savings on people he's never met. Maybe he's doing this out of natural kindness. A kindness that hasn't been eroded away by the struggles of his life. <sighs> Perhaps... To clarify, though, I don't think I'm quite the same. Some people call me an idealist. I do have some sentiments of that general persuasion, such as wanting everyone to be able to lead a happy life. But my situation is more complex than that. In the beginning, what drove me to harbor those thoughts was less idealism and more a desire to make up for a sense of guilt. When I was young... I impulsively encouraged my father to take part in the first Interdarshan Championship, hosted by the Academia. He set off confidently hoping to win something for me, but failed to clinch the title. What's more, 
he fell into depression after the competition and requested to join an investigative research project in the desert. I never saw him again. Word has it that he got caught in quicksand. Even if other factors may have contributed to his death, the fundamental cause still circles back to me. I started doing many things in life because I wanted to make amends. Even in cases where I couldn't do something for a specific person, I still did whatever I could. I think I just wanted to make myself feel a little better. At this point, even I don't know. I've tried self-reflection, but it didn't help. I can't seem to walk away from many things that I see or hear about, even if they don't directly concern me. And I can't quite pinpoint the source of it. Maybe it's just like what those Vahumana scholars often say. It's hard for people to truly understand themselves. I could be doing things out of endless guilt, or I could be doing them out of a strong sense of empathy. It could even just be a matter of conceit. The potential motivations could number in the dozens, but the actions they result in are the same. Anyway, I suppose I don't really mind being called an idealist. They also use that term to describe my father. It seemed to carry fewer connotations back when he was around. I've known Al Haytham for many years now, and discussed my ideology with him for nearly as long. Uh, maybe argued is a better word for it. He told me a long time ago that no matter how strong of a swimmer you may be, you'll still get dragged under by the others who are drowning once you run out of stamina. He believes this is the fate that awaits all idealists. I still believe I should live by my ideals, and I've given him countless reasons why I think it's a good idea to do so. Perhaps my ideals are flawed, but are there really any perfect things in this world? Unfortunately, he remains unconvinced. His personality is the exact opposite of my own. If someone happens to drown next to him, he'll most likely stand on the shore and mumble something along the lines of respecting other people's fates. But as you can see, I'm not the only idealist in the world. Just as there are different seasons, there are also different people. There are many others who will continue to care about the fates of those who are not directly related to them. And when I finally run out of stamina, someone will also reach out and bring me back to shore. Someone will help me, right? Yes, I've already been helped like that before. Oh, please. It's not like we're actually talking about swimming. Also, just so you know, I actually took a swimming elective back in the day. Don't underestimate my skills. Either way, I'm feeling much better than when you first found me at the tavern. I can feel inspiration already welling up inside of me. Maybe this will be just the opportunity I needed to create a whole new style. All right. Let's head to Aru Village. Now that we're here, it's my partner's time to shine. Marak, my toolbox. I built it using an ancient mechanical core. It's not too smart, but it's super useful and can help me with a variety of tasks. I'll take Marak and find a suitable location for the building. Once that is done, I'll get to work on a few designs. Ah, you know each other? Educational assistance programs. Hmm... Then you must be familiar with the local conditions here. I've been commissioned by Mr. Badawi to build a library in the desert. We've settled on the general design direction, but we are trying to finalize some details based on the conditions around the intended location. Let me get straight to my questions, then. Can you estimate the number of children around here who'd be interested in reading? Besides the usual noise of village pedestrians, are there any other sources of noise in the village? Oh, and have any landslides occurred here recently? And also, where are the spots around the village that have been most affected by wind and erosion? <sighs> All right, that should be everything. Badawi, let's go over the budget again. We'll keep the building structure the same, but make the place a little bigger, so it'll be able to hold more people and get better natural light. The parts of the project that cost the most will be the insulation and ventilation materials. I'm sure you understand. No one likes to read in a place that's hot and stuffy. I want to make significant changes to the arrangement of the bookshelves, tables, and chairs. I'll go over the specifics of that shortly. I have two plans in mind. Both are pretty minimalist in style, but will provide a very different ambiance from the world outside. 
Our final cost should be around 70% of the last figure I quoted. The whole thing should take around half a year to complete. Maroc has produced a sketch for all of you to see. If everyone's okay with it, then we'll proceed with that as the formal plan. The inspiration just came to me naturally. All I did was put thoughts to paper. I must give you credit, though. If it weren't for your advice and suggestions, I probably wouldn't have landed on this new style so quickly. According to the traditions of my profession, I should probably name this style after you. Let's call it the Traveler Style. In the meantime, let's look forward to the day when this building is completed and can finally open its doors. Sponsor the project? You mean convince wealthy merchants to join our cause and pull their money together to build the library? That does make sense. A library is a big project, and it's going to be hard to fund it with just a single person's mora. What do you think? If we can find others to sponsor the project, we could potentially increase the size of the building two- or threefold. Well, you're right. If I really think about it, I'm not too familiar with many big-name merchants. Her? Hard pass. With her shrewd and greedy personality, she would never put Mora into something like this. Hmm, now there's an idea. She probably won't say no if all she'll need to do is to make some introductions instead of spending Mora. Let's go and pay her a visit. Hey, can't you think of something else for a change? You are literally living in an objet d'art, and yet your mind is still fixated on nothing but Mora? What is the point of wealth, anyway? Is your happiness entirely dependent on your horde of cold, emotionless Mora? <sighs> You're hopeless. Oh, I knew you wouldn't be interested in something like this. Still, you wouldn't refuse just making some introductions for us, would you? A fee? You mean just for introductions? Five hundred thousand? Oh, I guess that's okay. But why are you charging a fee before we've even secured any funding? That just doesn't seem right. Besides, by helping us out, you'd be doing a great service to the public. Can't you take your mind off your mora even for just one second and focus on something far more important? Th thank you so much. All right, here's the situation. I've been commissioned to build a library in the desert, with the intended goal of allowing the desert dwellers to have more access to reading materials. Correct. I'm not too concerned about how much I'll get for the commission fees, actually. I'm fine with doing it for free. I just want to get this project rolling as soon as possible. We're just a little short on funding. Then how about this? What if, instead of building a single library, we commit to an entire complex of buildings dedicated to culture and education? I'll just give an example. If we were to build a library and a school near Aru Village, then the desert dwellers would gradually begin to migrate towards the area. A whole suite of buildings will be able to host more traffic, and thus drive the economic development of the entire area. In turn, that would lead to direct business opportunities. I've been to the desert several times. Although there are still many lingering tensions between the two regions, the amount of interaction has been steadily increasing, and in the long term, the desert will only become more and more important to Sumeru. Even the greenest amateurs know that urban planning will affect population flow. If you don't believe me, you can ask anyone on the street to confirm it to you. Hey, why are you starting to sound like I'll hate them? What? Uh, but if you were to do that... Hey, guys, wait! <sighs> well, what can I say? I guess it went somewhat as expected. They are Dory's friends, after all. As soon as they heard that there's not much more in this for them, they lost all interest. Yeah, it's just another day doing business with people. But I can never get used to that. Those people never think of anyone other than themselves. Looks like we'll have to figure out some other way to get the funding. Let's go. Please don't tell me that you're here to mock us. But this isn't just a business project, right? Also, if you already knew no one would want to partner with us, why did you still try to charge me 500,000 mora? You scammer! I'll pay back every last coin that I still owe you, but that's a completely different matter. What? Really? I... Uh, I would like to sincerely apologize for my attitude just now. So, where would we be meeting this merchant? You said you're going to introduce us to the most famous merchant in Sumeru. 
Well, where are they? Huh? So you meant yourself all along? Then why did you bring us here? Seriously? Where's this generosity coming from so suddenly? Are you trying to scam me again? I get it, I get it. I won't charge any commission fees, and I'll take responsibility for the entire project. Phew. This way, the children of the desert will have some books to read. Their lives should improve a bit after this. Of course, there are a few things better than using my knowledge to help other people change their fates. I must thank you as well, Dory. I used to say you only cared about Mora, which might have been some prejudice on my part. Sorry for that. I will also try to pay back my debts as soon as possible. Now, let's have a quick discussion. Where would you want the library to be built? That will be the most important building. Huh? The deed? So hold on a sec. The person who has been buying up everything around Aru Village was you all along? But what about my commission fees? It's obvious that you used every trick in the book to deceive me. You deliberately paused for a long time while talking about the project and kept glancing at me with that menacing look in your eyes. <sighs> Fine, I'll drop the argument on the commission fees. But since you said you're paying for dinner, I'm going to order the best dishes and booze this place has to offer, and lots of it. Tonight, we're feasting until I've recouped my full commission fees. Sounds great to me. I don't even want to think about this project anymore. But what should we do? It's probably not a good idea to just drink until I pass out here. Huh? Where did that come from? I mean, it's not like it's some kind of secret. You probably already know some bits and pieces of my past. My mother is also an architect. I've always adored her drawings, and when I was young, I used to sit next to her and watch her bring all kinds of buildings to life on paper. You could say my interest in architecture just naturally grew with time. Perhaps. In fact, I have also seen my mother argue with her clients, but she would always quickly find the motivation to return to her work. Unfortunately, I've barely had any contact with her since she remarried and moved abroad. Even if I wanted to ask her about her ability to stay positive after an argument, it would seem rude to barge into her life again over something as trivial as that. I did remember something else, though. When my mother left, she only carried some small personal luggage with her. She left most of the belongings in the house to me. At the time, she even told me that it would be great if I could learn a few lessons from her life experiences, so my life and career could go a little more smoothly. I hadn't quite come to grips with my emotions, and didn't really have it in me to go through any sentimental items, so I just packed anything with memories away in a box and haven't reopened it since. It's been a really long time. Now that so many years have passed, maybe I have finally developed the maturity I need to face those memories without losing my mind. Yeah. I should dig it out and take a look. Uh, huh? Ah. Uh, sorry, I've had too much to drink and wasn't thinking clearly. You're right. I should do these kinds of things with the support of a friend. Uh, speaking of that, I can call you a friend now, right? Either way, thanks for reminding me that I can invite you to come along. Had I just gone back by myself, it would have looked like I'm deliberately trying to keep things from you. Ugh, thinking too hard about the words is giving me a headache, so I'll just give it to you straight. <clears throat> Thanks to your advice, I have decided to put my current projects on pause for now, and spend some time trying to rekindle the passion for my craft. If you want to stick around and see how this will turn out, you'll be sure to encounter some bits and pieces of my past. Do you think you'd find that too boring? All right, then let's head back together. I mean, you already know where I live. <laughs> Who knew that the day would come when I, too, would have some friends over? Let me see. I should have tidied up the place before I left the house this morning. Oh, Hatham shouldn't be home now, either. He's usually in the records room at this time of the day. Anyway, there's no more time for drinks. I'll go take care of the bill. All Hatham isn't in, so feel free to sit wherever. I'll bring out the box. <sighs> oh, nothing. I just didn't realize how much time had passed. The box is pretty dusty, which means it's already been a while since I've moved into this place. 
and many years since my mother moved to Fontaine. I'm happy for her. I hope she'll be able to find happiness there. She raised me all by herself after my father passed away. It definitely wasn't easy for her. Anyway, enough about that. Uh, let's see what I packed into this box. Ah, uh, what are all these things? Oh, I remember now. This is a drawing I made in Port Ormos. Obviously, I wouldn't call it anything special now, but I was less than five years old when I made this drawing. That's more than twenty years ago. <laughs> you could say it's pretty good for a child of that age. Hmm, now that I've said that out loud, I suppose I do have some level of artistic talent, right? Criticism and self-doubt have always been a part of the artistic process. Without criticism, there can be no improvement. It's normal for me to question my abilities from time to time. I admit that I may have spent a little too long questioning myself this time around, but as you know, the heart tends to dwell on whatever it pleases. <sighs> anyway, never mind. The more I talk about it, the less confident I feel. Let's see what else we have in the box. Ah, my building blocks! It's been years since I've last seen these. When I was a kid, I used to stack them super high, and could even stabilize the tower to keep it from tumbling over. Oh, and this blueprint. <laughs> I made it by copying my mother's sketch, and the aspect ratio was horrendous. It's still technically the first blueprint I made myself, though. I was super proud of myself when I finished it, and put it in the same pile as my mother's sketches, hoping she'd notice and compliment me for my good work. Unfortunately, my mother didn't realize that I had put it there. When she had a meeting with a client the next day, she handed my blueprint to him by mistake. The client was completely confused by this new blueprint, but apparently he felt too tongue-tied to question such a famous architect. It was only a few days later that he finally gathered up the courage to pay my mother a visit. He asked, The door in this blueprint is even taller than the roof. Is this supposed to be part of the design? My mother took me with her to personally apologize to the client several times. She didn't scold me about it in private, though. Instead, she went over all the steps required to draw a good blueprint, and was very patient throughout the whole process. I still remember it like it was yesterday. Hmm. Let's see, is there anything else left in this box? Huh. What was this again? Ah, this is my mother's notebook. She used to write and sketch in it all the time. When I was a child, I used to be super fascinated by this notebook, and always pestered my mother to let me read it. After asking her a few times, she told me that I could read it as long as I could guess the password. Huh. Wonder why she didn't take this notebook with her. Did she leave it to me on purpose? <laughs> if only I could. I never managed to guess the password. Hey, it's not a matter of time, it's a matter of inspiration. That's what we need to guess the password. Who knows, maybe this time something will click in my head, and the answer will just present itself. Let me think. Hmm. What could it be? <laughs> I could tell what you were thinking. Don't worry, I tried all the easy guesses a long time ago. I've tried my name, my father's name, my mother's name, my grandparents' names on both sides, and all of our birthdays. I've tried every name and number remotely related to my family. I've even tried stuff like Love You Cave, Take Care, and Yours Truly. I've tried every cheesy phrase and well-wish in the book, but this lock has refused to budge. I wouldn't try that route again. I have a hunch that it won't be that simple. Also, if she really did use something like that, she'd never hear the end of it from the folks over at Haravatat if they ever found out. So we could find someone who was close to my mother and see if they might know anything? Hmm, I see what you're saying, but who should we talk to for that? My mother was never really the one to be social. My father was the one with more friends, but all those connections were severed when he died. Let me think... Is there still someone at the Academia who would know my mother? Ah, actually, there is someone. Professor Zaha Hadi. Huh, you've never really heard of her? She's a famous Gasharwar scholar and leading expert in formal garden design. My mother studied under her as a student many years ago. 
Professor Zaha Hadi published many works during her career, so I was able to learn a lot by studying her essays. If there's anyone who still remembers my mom, it'd be her. She's older now and is no longer teaching at the academia. But if I remember correctly, she spends most of her time around the Bimarstan area. Let's go take a look. We might run into her if we're lucky. Tainari? What are you doing here, Granny? I had a quick drink or two. Uh, can you still smell the alcohol? Um, uh, I... Uh, uh, huh? Oh, I had no idea. Uh, let me think for a moment. Uh, uh, I'll come if I can find some time. A granny who lives nearby. Let's go take a look. Professor Zahahadi? Um, uh, Professor, what's going on here? Uh, uh yes, uh, of course. Yes, as far as I know. She left for Fontaine some time ago and started a new life for herself. She's still doing work related to architecture, though. No, not at all. She's already sacrificed a lot raising me as a single mother. I'm sure she had many difficult moments in her life. How did she cope with the stress? So that's how it is. Hmm. I wonder if the password could be... Hmm. I tried both just now. Seems those aren't it either. My mother left her notebook to me, but it has a password, and I haven't figured out what it is yet. I'm trying to learn more about her so I'd have a better chance at cracking the code. Thank you for all that you told us. I see. But could he understand the designs my mother made? Hmm. So instead of understanding, perhaps all we need is just companionship. Huh. It worked! Yes! Thank you so much, Professor. I wonder what my mother could have written about. Hmm. Huh? Is this a drawing? Seems like it was done by my mother. This blonde man was probably my father. But who are the other people in the picture? Huh? Why do a few of them look somewhat familiar? From the dates in the notebook, she probably drew this more than 30 years ago. I hadn't even been born yet. Maybe we were thinking too much. Oh, there are a few lines written in the diary about this as well. Who would have thought my mother used to attend that kind of thing? It seemed she was only good at talking about her own work and found it difficult to join into other conversations. As a result, she often kept to herself and would be off to the side, drawing. There's more written on the back. Oh, it seems like it was written to me. So that's the answer she prepared for me. She really thought long and hard about me and my future. Well, now that I've read her words, do you think I should accept Tainari's invite and attend that dinner at Pardis D.I.? Uh, the thought definitely crossed my mind. Although it'd be nice to get together with friends and chat the night away, I don't want to bring down other people's moods because I'm sad. Besides, don't most people hate the feeling of seeing their friends troubled and being unable to help? And what's worse, nearly all of my problems can't be easily resolved with some encouraging words or gesture. And don't forget, I'm also older than all of them. As their senior, I should appear to be a bit more responsible. Huh, you're right. <sighs> I really didn't expect to run into him here. I swear, his nose must be just as sensitive as his ears. Well then, I guess, it's best that we go and join him for dinner. <sighs> that means I'll owe him yet another meal now. You know what? I'm not going to overthink it. I'll see you tomorrow at Pardis D.I. <laughs> that guy? He's never been a fan of social gatherings. I wouldn't get my hopes up if I were you. Yeah, let's go. Uh... I mean, maybe we should give him a little more time. We can keep chatting for a while longer. You still haven't told me. What's the occasion for getting us together here at Pardis D.I.? I knew this wouldn't be just a simple free dinner. Is that why you also invited Al Haytham? I'd just pull another all-nighter. Ooh, that's a good point. Confidence is the most important thing. Once you lose your sense of confidence, it'll become all but impossible to find the motivation to study. Wow, you actually showed up. I could probably count the number of times you've actually come to gatherings like this on just one hand. Hmph. As long as you're still aware. So, 
What made the difference this time? Are you looking to drink your sorrows away with some friends? So you're saying the only reason you came is to help Tainari with his brainstorming? Hey, just to get one thing clear. Even if Kale manages to make her way to the Academia, we cannot let her enroll in her Avatat. Kasharwar is obviously the best choice for her. She's been a trainee forest ranger for so long, she'll definitely be good with her hands. Then what about Amorta? That's the Darshan her master actually graduated from. You? I'm trying to have a serious discussion here. Traveler, you aren't associated with any of the six Darshans. In your opinion, which Darshan would be the best choice for Kale? Hey, what are you thinking now? Please don't tell me you're planning on lending her those abstruse books from your home library. I'll make sure to write, Don't Become an Architect, on the front page of that. <laughs> you're right, I can't deny that. I'm telling you, that client had no idea what he was talking about. No matter what I did, he had something bad to say about it. Ah, they're all the same. I haven't had a good night's sleep for months now. <laughs> Who do they think they are, ordering me to alter my design over and over again just because they have some mora? No. <laughs> That's not true. I... <sighs> Whatever. I'm not going to use my brain anymore. Let's drink tonight to our heart's content. Exactly. So our thoughts on the meaning of art are rather similar. In Sumeru, and especially Sumeru of the past, the arts are not a popular discussion topic. Trying to talk about the arts is basically the key to killing any conversation. It's too bad that I'm not in my best form today. Otherwise, we could have talked about this for a little longer. A different career. I see. That's not a bad idea. I think I've heard a saying somewhere before. 80% of a working adult's woes are due to not having enough mora in the bank. It's just a saying, of course, but even I will admit that my life would be a lot better if I could make additional mora. And if I want to make mora... I should finish that ridiculous commission. But I really can't find it in me to go back and talk to him right now. Hold on. I just remembered that I used to have a senior classmate by the name of Alkami. If memory serves me right, he's no longer taking private commissions, but he's still doing pretty well for himself. Maybe I'll be able to get some advice from him. Yeah, I should get on this right away. No more wine for me today. I'll grab the bill and be on my way. Yeah, it's been a long time, Alkami. Things haven't changed much for me. I'm still taking private commissions for all kinds of projects. Uh, well, it's hard to make a profit from every project, you know. Well, uh, about that. I mean, it was complicated. Are you serious? But something like that has got to be some kind of top-level business secret. Are you sure you can just share something like that with me? Besides, I don't want to just take something like that without offering anything in return. I still have a little mora. Or is there something that I can help you with? Ah, so you want me to join you as an instructor? Hmm, that does sound like something I'd be able to do. It sounds like a pretty stable job, too. What do you think, Traveler? Yes, it's a deal. Thank you, Alkami. Three hundred thousand? Are you serious? How could you offer so much? I was never particularly close with Alkami when we were in school. Who would have thought that he'd be so nice and friendly? I've hosted free lectures before, but this would be my first time being hired to lecture for a formal business. Three hundred thousand mora per lecture. Whew, I'm so excited that I'm starting to get nervous. Thanks so much. <sighs> I think I will be able to relax a bit more with a friend in the audience. Now, what should I talk about tomorrow? Some lessons I've learned over the past few years? Hmm, I should probably save those for later. For my first lecture, I should start by getting them more interested in the field. All right, let's meet here again tomorrow morning. I should hurry home and create some kind of lesson plan. If I'm going to become an instructor... I should make sure I show up prepared. 
I was up last night preparing for the lecture, but I ended up getting so excited that I couldn't fall asleep. Here, I've prepared a lesson plan. Do you want to take a look? Huh. So you've already developed your own set of teaching materials. Seems like I won't need the stuff I've prepared after all. <laughs> anyway, shouldn't be a problem. I'll just go ahead and use your materials. There's something else I want to ask, though. This isn't going to be a large class, is it? Twenty people, huh? All right. I think I can handle that. Ah, sorry about that. I'll meet you at the door when the class is over, then. All right, everyone. There's no need to be nervous. Class is over, so we can just chat for a bit. I shouldn't have lost my temper during the lecture. Did I scare anybody? Oh, don't get me started. I was trying to use Alkami's materials, so I flipped through some pages and gave them a closer look. The more I read, the more upset I became. Alkami may fool an amateur, but he can't fool anyone who's active in our profession. The materials he made are completely useless for teaching real architecture. In my opinion, the most important skill of an architect is their ability to craft a design. In other words, they must be able to conceptualize ideas. There are tens of thousands of buildings in the world, as well as a countless number of architectural styles. Some designs emphasize aesthetics, while others prioritize practicality. The architects who can critically evaluate the quality and fit of different designs are those who can come up with great designs of their own. But you won't get any of that from the teaching materials they're using here. All these students are doing in class is rote memorization of existing designs. They are learning nothing about the underlying principles. How can they expect to become real architects? When they're done with this class, all they'll become are dilettantes with a pitiful smattering of architectural knowledge. You're studying architecture to make mora? Huh. In that case, I'm afraid you'll probably be disappointed. The reality is that the work of an architect is very difficult, and the pay is not lucrative at all. Believe me, I'm a perfect example. Come on. And you all believed everything he said? You... <clears throat> It's pointless trying to argue this with you right now. You've already filled your heads with pipe dreams. Let's go, Traveler. Let's hear about Alkami's true plans from the man himself. Yeah, I'm mad at them. But I'm even more upset that you're scamming people under the guise of teaching them about architecture. The students are all here hoping for a quick way to make money. But we both know that an architect's life is hard and exhausting. Just a little while ago, I was toiling over the sixth draft of a design for a client. If your client is unhappy, you can't break ground, and the longer a project goes, the longer it takes for you to get paid in full. What's worse, if your client disappears in the middle of a project, good luck getting anything from them ever again! You know all of this just as well as I do. Why lie to them? I suppose that's more or less true. Go on. Wait, how does that make any sense? Aren't you just leading them into the same trap? And then what? Once they graduate, they'll still find out the truth about architecture and struggle to stay afloat amid all the problems we already talked about. When that happens, your facade will pop like a soap bubble. No one will believe you anymore. You... How can you sleep at night knowing that you're doing all this? Tell me, is your heart carved out of brick and stone? I can't believe that I once saw you as a decent human being. I... I am beyond disappointed in you. <sighs> I'm so mad I feel a headache coming on. There's nothing more I can say to him. I'll resign from my position as instructor. Of course. I'm sure you've realized that as long as I remained at the center, he would be able to use my name to advertise this place. Even if I just sit back and do nothing, others will be deceived and suffer because of me. He is right about one thing, though. These kinds of training centers are everywhere. And even if the academia was to find out about it, it's unlikely that they would take any real action against it. The most that they could accuse him of is false advertising. And even that would be hard to prove. Oh? Did you notice something else? Yeah, you've got a point. The rate he gave me was 300,000 mora per lecture. That probably came out of the student's tuition. And who knows just how much he's been charging the students for attending his classes. 
If you're gambling everything on making it rich as an architect, are you really going to have the mora to pay for that kind of tuition? Right. We should hurry. The students didn't believe a word I was telling them. They're still daydreaming about making millions. We're never going to get any information from them again if we let Alkami talk to them first. Let's move now before he's had the chance to react. Class finished a while ago, but you're still here. Why haven't you gone home? Of course they were. All the examples I drew were world-famous landmarks. Each one was the magnum opus of a celebrated architect. It's a good thing that you could recognize them for their beauty. The accumulation of knowledge is the first step to artistic expression. Instead of rote memorization, you should try to relate and to understand, and after that, try to resonate with the work. Yes! When I first got into architecture, there were many things about it that I couldn't understand at all. I would find a building to be beautiful, but have no idea what made it so good. And for most people, just being able to admire a building is enough. To become a good architect, however, you must also learn to assess and appraise. Going from admiration to assessment will take a lot of time and specialized knowledge, and I'm afraid that some superficial speed training won't be enough to take you there. <sighs> I'm sorry. I'm not trying to crush your dreams. All I want to tell you is that an architect's life is not as carefree and easy as others may make it out to be. Hmm? Paid off what? Don't listen to him. I am the most famous architect in Sumeru. If he kicks you out, then I'll just take you in instead. Why would I pull your leg? I can see you have some talent. So as long as you get your fundamentals down, you should be able to pass the entrance exam and continue your studies at the academia. How much did your family borrow from this merchant? And what was the interest rate? <clears throat> yeah, I have a bad feeling, too. We need to find that merchant to confirm. But if we were to confront him right now, there's no way he'd admit to anything. Good idea. Hey, tell me, do you know where we'd be able to find this merchant? Well, it'd still be worth taking a look. Architecture... <sighs> no. The arts shouldn't be used as bait for a scam. We need to do something before the students' lives are ruined even further. You're Fahar, right? Alkami. My friend here wants to enroll in his architecture class, but they're a bit short on money. Alkami told us you're the man to go to in this kind of situation. Let me see. I'd say around three million mora. And what if they won't be able to pay it back? Hmm. I just did some calculations in my head. When you say the interest will get a little higher, do you mean it'll get higher than 30%? Of course, the contract did a great job of trying to obfuscate that fact. It only listed the amount that you'll have to repay every day, which gives the false impression that the amount hasn't actually increased by all that much. If you actually do the math, however, it's clear that the amount you need to pay on interest alone will amount to hundreds of thousands of mora per year. Most people can't even make that much mora in a year. Your greed really knows no bounds. Even my creditor doesn't dare to raise rates that high. Once a family signed onto a scheme like this, there's no getting out. Ah, uh, Eremites. Hmm, I've already fought off more than my fair share of them when I was working in the desert. There are only a few of them, so they shouldn't pose much of a threat. Marak, you're up. Debt has the power to append your whole life. I know very well just how miserable living in debt can be. But my debts are the culmination of many different factors, and my interest rate is still somewhat reasonable. As long as I continue to work with my situation in mind, my debts will eventually be paid off. But these students are different. They have neither the mental preparation nor the financial resources to pay back a debt like this. You sold the dreams of becoming an architect to the students as bait, urging them to take on insurmountable amounts of debt to satisfy your greed. Ha! Huh. And here comes the silver tongue. Surely you use that to reel in the students as well. Even now, many of them are still hopelessly dreaming of striking gold after they graduate. People grow by learning from their mistakes. I hope this will be a valuable lesson to them. Let's head back to the academia and turn this guy over to the Matra. They should be able to link him with Alkami's business. Sino? Didn't think I would run into you here. That should still be enough. Once the students realize the error of their ways, they won't fall so easily for such traps in the future. 
Anyway, thank you for your help. I hope this won't be too much trouble for you. He promised to pay me 300,000 mora per lecture, but I resigned as soon as I finished the first session. I didn't take a single coin. Hmm? What do you mean, that's good? Would you have taken me into custody as well if I had actually accepted any mora? Hey, what was that? What do you mean my life is a mess? You're just messing with me now, aren't you? Huh, I didn't even know there was such a thing. I never would have guessed. <clears throat> what I'm trying to say is that we didn't report Alkami because we thought we could make some more off of it. <sighs> Fine. I want to go back to the training center one more time and talk to some of the kids. All right, then I'll stay out of their way. I can talk to the kids tomorrow. Phew, <sighs> that should finally be the end of that. Ugh, who would have thought it would turn out like this? All I wanted was to find a new gig and earn some mora. To think Alkami would sink this low, it still makes me really upset. Still, I think I feel a little better now than when you found me back at the tavern. It's a little ironic, but you could say it's because I've realized that there are many circumstances in the world that are even worse than my own. Now that I've seen such things firsthand, I suppose I've earned a new sense of appreciation for my life. How should I put it? I'm pretty stubborn when it comes to my profession, so I often argue with my clients. The arguments are usually extremely frustrating, and every once in a while I'd wonder if I only became an architect because fate wanted me to pay for some sins I'd committed in a previous life. Alkami's suggestion would have allowed me to quit my life as an architect and earn money solely from my reputation, but now that I've experienced that for myself, I can confidently say that I'd never want to do it again. Every scholar has their own sense of pride and a line that they don't like to cross. Of course, when faced with the vicissitudes of life, some will surrender these things to seek a more comfortable life. I can understand that. Just speaking for myself, though, I don't think that's something I'd ever be able to do. The voice in my heart would just keep repeating one thing. The moment I turn away from my dreams would be the moment my career ends. If I stopped devoting everything to my creative activities, I'd be able to lead a more comfortable life, but at the same time, my sense of intuition and understanding for the arts would also begin to degrade. At that point, any materialistic ease I may have gained in life would just become another form of torment. In comparison, my current life comes with its share of difficulties, but at least I'd never have to deal with that kind of existential reckoning. <laughs> I appreciate it. You may call me conceited for this, but I would also like to think I'm talented enough to be able to lead a decent life without compromising my pride. It's certainly not easy, but I want to keep at it. My thanks again for being such a great help throughout all of this. I'm planning to pay another visit to those kids tomorrow. Want to come with me? All right, I'll see you tomorrow then. Get some good rest. <clears throat> so, you're the only ones that showed up today, huh? Now, that's Mr. Cave to you. I'm here as your instructor, so let's keep things a little more proper. I'll keep instructing you for a while longer. You can pass on the message to the other students. As long as someone wants to come, they can join the class. Oh, also, I'm usually pretty busy, so I'll only be able to teach architecture fundamentals on my days off. Another disclaimer, I can't promise that you'll all be able to understand everything I'm going to teach. Architecture is not an easy profession. Aesthetics aside, even the basics of safe design can already be a handful for most people. If you want to design safe buildings, you'll have to go through a systematic study of structural engineering. And just as a heads up, all of this will be a huge step up from the superficial stuff you were learning before. It'll take both talent and perseverance to get through the course. I don't want to hear anyone say that I didn't warn you. <laughs> It seems some of you are really serious about this after all. All right, everyone, pack your stuff up. No need to prepare much for today's class. We're going to go on a quick field trip. You'll know once we get there. Come on, let's get going. We'll be off once everyone's grabbed their pencils and sketch pads. This lighthouse has been around for a long time, and I handled its renovations when I first graduated from the academia. The point of today is not so much about the lighthouse as a building, however. I just want you to take a look at it and do a bit of self-reflection. If you were tasked today with designing a building, how would you want it to look like? Don't think about how you'd actually go about building it for now. 
Just put your ideas to paper and draw the prettiest building that comes to your mind. Yep, as long as you think it'd look good. It doesn't even necessarily have to be a building. If you want, you can draw trees, the ocean, or even a garden area. Draw whatever you'd like. In my experience, it's best to approach the study of architecture from a point of personal interest, rather than for the sake of a career. Both the study and practice of architectural design are extremely difficult. A person who's forced to work on projects that they don't resonate with will only struggle and suffer. So at least for today, I hope the students will be able to create something that they enjoy. There's no need to think about it too hard. They'll have plenty of time in the future to revisit the design and make changes. What do you think? Want to try your hand at it as well? Don't forget that this is a free class from Mr. Kave, the Light of the Kisharwar. On a normal day, this would cost you 300,000 mora. <sighs> yeah, you're right. Although I was hoping to find some words of wisdom from my mother, if I stop and think about it, her words may not be the advice that I need to hear right at this moment. Everyone's life journey is different. Traveler, you've visited many lands and met many people, so I'm sure you've run into situations where some advice wasn't exactly suitable for the situation at hand. Ah, I just got an idea, though. If I want to rekindle the creative passion that I had before, instead of trying to unlock an old notebook, why don't I take a walk around the parts of town that had changed my life? What do you think? I'm glad you agree. Then let's start by taking a quick stroll around the academia. Of all the places in the academia, I remember this one most. When my studies got busy, I used to pull all-nighters here trying to finish my blueprints. <laughs> Who doesn't miss their time at the academia? Life was a lot simpler then, and we all had far less troubles. I created many designs that I thought were beautiful in the house of Dana. I drew whatever came to mind, since I didn't have to care about budget constraints or turning them into reality. Hmm, if I had to give a reason, it'd probably be because I like the ambiance here. The Academia also had a rule that allowed scholars to annotate any physical books they came across. As a result, the books here are chock full of scholars' wisdom across many generations. Oh, oh here, this is a great example. This book, History of Ancient Sumeru Architecture, contains some analysis that I did many years ago. Huh? Why is Alhatham's handwriting also in here? When did he ever read this book? Ah, I guess it's probably from when we worked on that research project together. Anyway, he probably never cared to tell you this, but the House of Dana is where Alhatham and I first met. I came here to do my homework, and saw him sitting by himself next to that row of bookshelves. A group of Haravatat scholars were chatting near him, but he looked as if he was too lazy to join them. There was a pretty stark difference between him and all the rest of them. It was my fault for feeling bad for him. I thought he must have gotten into some kind of trouble and went over to ask if he needed anything, not realizing that- I'll hate them? Why are you here? But shouldn't you be at the records room at this hour? You're not here to watch me make a fool of myself, are you? All right, all right, I admit I was probably overreacting just now. Uh, probably not when he's right here with us. As his senior, I shouldn't try to tarnish his reputation. Ahem. As a senior scholar, isn't it my responsibility to offer my friend a quick tour and explanation of the Academia's architecture? Uh huh? But why would you know that? Don't tell me you finally had an epiphany and realize that there's great virtue in respecting your elder's work. What? But all of my annotations were extremely important. Instead of reporting me, they should have been thanking me for my service. The notes that I took, they couldn't have asked for a better analysis of those books. Okay, just you wait. I'm going to fix this right now. I'll dig all the books out and return them to the proper shelves. Looks like you were having an enjoyable chat while I was gone. Were you talking about me by any chance? <laughs> what else is there to talk about? Surely no one would be interested in talking about the files that you were browsing through earlier. Anyway, you should take a look at this. Look at this comment on page 82. Dear Kave, thank you so much for annotating this book in such detail. It was a great help to me. See that? Now that's how a student should treat their seniors. Me? Happy? I'm mocking that retired blockhead for being so full of himself. 
He understands nothing about the true beauty of architecture. When I can find some time, I'll have a serious talk with him about making sure these books are put where they belong. Hey! You didn't need to bring that up! At least not when I'm still standing here. Oh, actually, I also found a really old sketch in one of the books over there. See? Doesn't it remind you of something? Huh? Don't tell me even you don't get it. You? <clears throat> in that case, allow me to explain. Although this sketch is a little abstract, you can plainly see from the road plans that this was an original concept for the expansion of Port Ormos. If I don't keep bringing up the neat projects that I've done, how would anyone know that I was the one who did them in the first place? If I remember correctly, the construction process was very smooth, everything was made ready ahead of time, and there were very few safety concerns. See? What did I tell you? Come on, let's take a stroll through Port Ormos next. I'll tell you all about the designs I made for the place. Hm, <laughs> suit yourself. It's not like you know how to appreciate artistry anyway. Let's go, Traveler. I'll take you to Port Ormos. Port Ormos. <sighs> no, I didn't design any one specific building. Most of my work here concerned structural renovation. Port Ormos had already existed since I was still a young child. It wasn't as large as it is now, though. It only came to its current size after a sizable expansion. I was part of that project. The Arch Bridge over there, for example. That was one of my designs. When I was first tasked with the project, I decided to reference the growth patterns of nearby trees to split Port Ormos into two levels. My goal was to improve the overall utilization of space. We ran into a lot of issues during construction, but thankfully, we were still able to achieve the original vision. Residents can now behold all the ships entering and leaving the harbor from the vantage point of the bridge, while visitors can recognize the site of Port Ormos from a long ways away. I was still young and new to the trade back then. I could hardly believe that an idea in my head could become reality and remain in the world for many years to come. The true cornerstone of the creative process. The point about the design that will be ultimately used to judge its true worth. It was the first time that it became crystal clear in my mind. Once built, a building will continue to stand. Countless people will see it, and countless more will step inside it. Its final worth, whether it's good or bad, will be assessed by the countless generations of people that interact with the building during their lives. You think so? I'm glad to hear that. But even with this project, I still had one small regret. My budget was tight, and I was unable to use the higher quality timber I had originally intended for the design. I knew that some concessions on aesthetics would be needed as soon as I agreed to a proposal that prioritized the practical functions of the project. Us creative types know better than anyone that most projects cannot be completed without a few regrets. Even the Palace of Alcazarzare was not perfect. Yeah, you're right. I should learn to look toward future opportunities, and believe that any regrets I have can be overcome in time. We've spent long enough here. There's still one last place I want to go, but it's a little far. Would you be interested in a quick trip to the desert? Great! Most of my projects over the last few years have had something to do with the desert, partially because there's a special place there that I often visit. This is a rare opportunity, so why don't you come along and see it for yourself? If you ever feel down, maybe you'll be able to go there and feel better too. Who would have thought that so many primal constructs could have congregated here while I was gone? We won't be able to sit and talk peacefully with these guys around. Let's clear the area. Isn't this place great? I often come here to clear my mind when I'm dealing with a difficult situation. You know what I mean. Everyone finds themselves in frustrating situations once in a while. Just take me as an example. My family life got shaken up quite a bit when I was young. I struggled in school, and I got into a huge pile of debt building the Palace of Alcazarzare. Although Alhatham thinks that it's because of my personality that I continue to live in the shadow of the past, I think it's also just a part of life. Plus, if I look back, I've honestly had my fair share of good luck as well. You could probably say I've followed in the path of my mother. Like her, I've gained a name for myself as an architect, built something that's seen as my magnum opus, and found many projects that others have entrusted to me to finish. Life is too boring when you live with no enthusiasm and passion. 
Only those who believe in the inherent meaning of it can capture the small nuances of everyday life and turn them into inspiration for beautiful designs. Of course, I will concede that loving something also means taking it to heart. So to an extent, caring is also a source of pain. If I didn't love my work, I wouldn't be so torn up about it all the time. But still, isn't this place beautiful? Despite the erosion from the winds and changing seasons, you can still perceive its past beauty and glory. With different landforms come different architectural styles. The desert's history has left it with few records regarding its buildings, so I often visit the desert to investigate things in person. The sight here has moved me ever since the first time I laid my eyes on it. I told myself that one day, I would also be able to create buildings that move others. My pain will one day fade into nothing just as I've reached the end of my life. But buildings are different. They are far more valuable than most materialistic things, and far more durable than human flesh. As long as there remain souls in the world who can decipher the meaning behind them, they will also have acknowledged me across the vast stream of time. If you were to ask me what art is, that would be my answer. You think so? But I feel I've always been like this. Remember that question I brought up before? The one about whether I should see art as a divine gift of inspiration from the gods, or as a product of my own existential struggle? I still haven't found an answer to that yet. But if art wasn't inherently paradoxical and enigmatic, then people probably wouldn't be drawn to it. Those who pursue art will be unable to avoid the pain that it naturally brings, will often be floating on cloud nine one second and sinking in a mire the next. I'll try gathering my thoughts again once I've found a way to define art in the first place. In any case, thank you so much for listening to everything I had to say.